Okay, in this video we're going to be looking at the um, differences between a carbon tax and an emissions trading scheme and the differences in how they go about trying to tackle climate change. So basically they were both part of a policy called uh, clean energy legislation um, that was introduced at the start of 2012 um, and both of them tried to internalise the costs associated with polluting using um, CO2 emissions and carbon pollution. So the first part was a carbon tax, and then they were planning on implementing an emissions trading scheme in July 2015, um, but they decided that that would not go ahead in the, in the end because of the, um, the costs involved. So in terms of the difference between the two, and it is important that you know the specifics of each of these policies because um, you know, they're not massive policies in terms of what they involve, but it is important that you can refer to the specifics. So in terms of the carbon tax, it was a $23 tax, um, and it's also important you say that it was levied on the top 500 producers. So it was a tax of $23 that was expected to rise by 2.5% per year. Um, and the idea was that producers would need to purchase or pay a tax for every tonne of carbon that they emitted. And the idea of that tax was to internalise the external costs of their pollution. So they were internalising the external costs from burning fossil fuels, which will increase the price of coal-based energy, and hopefully firms using, using fossil fuels will face higher costs of production, shifting supply curve to the left, and therefore this will provide an incentive for firms to reduce their emissions and shift resources to more renewable energy sources. So it's a tax, it's a tax on supply, so it shifts the supply curve to the left, not the demand curve, but the idea is the producers will pass on that increased price to consumers, Consumers will pay a higher price, and that should lead to more demand for renewable energy sources and more profits in those industries, and therefore firms will start to shift resources to more renewable energy sources. Um, in terms of an emissions trading scheme, the, the first one is a tax that a, puts a price on the price of carbon. In this second one, the emissions trading scheme, the government determines the level of emissions that they want. So they say the level of emissions that they're willing to accept at that point in time, and then they give a certain number of permits out to different businesses that allow them to produce a certain amount of carbon emissions. So they might give out 500 permits and that allows a certain amount of CO2 emissions into the environment. Um, what will happen is some firms will not get enough permits, so they will decide that they need to buy permits of other businesses and other businesses won't need their permits. And those businesses that don't need permits are generally the ones that have already invested in cleaner energy and therefore they will sell those their permits to businesses that need them. So the idea is the government sets the level of emissions that they want, and then um, different businesses will buy and sell these permits, um, and a, what we call a carbon market will develop, um, where the price of carbon will be based on demand and supply. So what will happen over time is that the government will then reduce the level of emissions, uh, sorry, the number of permits that they have available, and that will gradually decrease the amount of emissions that go on. So when the government, say, reduces the number of permits from, say, 500 to 400, what will happen is that firms won't be getting as many permits, so there'll be more demand for other firms' permits, and that will increase the demand and increase the price of these permits in the uh, carbon market. So in the emissions trading scheme, they set the level of emissions that they want, and then they um, give a certain amount of permits out. If CO2 levels are too high, the government will reduce the level of permits, increasing their price, and therefore reducing the level of CO2 emitted. I mean, in terms of the main differences, and it is important to distinguish the difference between a carbon tax and an emissions trading scheme, the carbon tax directly targets the price of carbon, so it's $23 per tonne, businesses know it's $23 per tonne, but what can happen is businesses can choose to continue to emit um, because there's no cap on how much they emit. So if they're willing to pay the $23 and then that increase of 2.5% per year, they will continue to emit. Um, so the level of emissions is still variable and can go up and down based on businesses' decisions. Um, but it does provide greater certainty for businesses about the cost of polluting, but it has have less ability to control the actual amount of emissions. And if they don't set the tax at the right level, so if the tax is too low, it's going to lead to suboptimal outcomes and not enough of an emission reduction. The other problem is the demand for electricity is quite elastic. So the businesses can pass on a lot of these costs to consumers and it won't be as negative in terms of their profits as it would be if, it had, um, if electricity had a more elastic demand curve. Under the emissions trading scheme, however, the government sets the volume of emissions that they want and then the market determines the price. So this one, the government sets the emissions and the market determines the price. In the carbon tax, the government sets the price and the market sets the level of emissions. So this one gives greater control over the actual level of pollution because they determine how many permits they sell and that determines the level of carbon emissions. 
The government sets the legally permissible level and the market determines the most efficient way of achieving these levels. If businesses use more than their permits and don't buy them from other businesses, they face heavy fines. So there's a big disincentive to emit more than you should be. So the main difference, the government directly targets the price of carbon with the carbon tax and the market determines the amount of emissions. With the emissions trading scheme, the government sets the volume of emissions they want and the free market determines the price of the permits. Um, in terms of when the carbon tax was implemented, they did provide some assistance to households. Because it's a regressive tax that can hurt low income earners, um, they, and it was going to increase the price of electricity bills by about $10 for the average household, most households receive generous tax cuts or bigger welfare to compensate for the tax. So this was around the time that the tax-free threshold was increased, which helped low income earners. Um, they also prevented petrol from being taxed, which helps to um, improve equity a little bit. Um, and many carbon intensive industries were also protected via subsidies and things like that as well to try and limit the impact on particularly low income earners. Um, in terms of a carbon tax by itself without any of these um, uh, assistance, it is an example of the trade-off between equity and efficiency. So just like the 457 visas, it's targeting efficiency because it's trying to boost into temporal efficiency, preserve our resources for the future, and can also make us more technically efficient in the long term. But it comes at the expense of equity because it has regressive effects and the increased price of electricity will impact low income earners more. Thanks for listening.